Hello and welcome to episode 176 of Distant Waves. My name is Dominic. Ritz and Tricks are here. It is the dawn. Oh, but wait, uh, I slept through the last episode, so let me just give a quick recap um, on just everything. Uh, <clears throat> my sleeping through was really what my opinion was on uh, Muse and Radiohead. Uh, really, do not have much to say. Uh, caused me to fall asleep before the episode. <laughs> uh, Stephen Wilson, fucking great. Uh, it's a great album. Uh, Bass Communion, I actually really enjoy like the sound collage. Um, and the Your, Your Arms Are My Cocoon album is just phenomenal as always. Um, but if I had to give a ranking, it would be Muse at the bottom, then, then Radio. Um, then we'll come in with, um, uh, Steven Wilson, your arms are my cocoon. And I, I think base communion's at the top. That's certainly an opinion. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe we, we have, we have those periods of fight. We didn't get to fight in the last one. So let's fight for one minute. Now someone set the timer tricks. Okay. Yes. How did you genuinely like base communion? That was just the same fucking sound for an hour. I really like like sound collages and just exploring loud like just that those weird soundscapes and just it was a really lot of fun to me to just listen to. Yeah, but there was hardly any of that in there. It was just the same sound for an hour. No, there was more to it if you listened in deep. I, I think but I heard I, more sounds coming from my tap running. I I, I like it. I what can I say? Are you just like putting your the, ears closer is... to the speaker, or are you are you like just are you cutting the the fabric and putting your ear inside the speaker? I don't I don't understand. No, you have I'm to just, hear the sounds and off there. Yeah, you you have to focus in and like listen to what else is there. Like there's overtones and it's it's actually really fascinating if you like critically listen in on like good headphones. Sure, I don't trust Trix's opinion anymore. Dominic, what are we doing this week? All right. We have another Radiohead News episode, a, a sequel of sorts to the last episode. TKOL Remix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and TKOL Remix 8 single, because that came out later than the uh, album, because it was late. Who knows why? Then the Jaded Hearts Club, Live at the 100 Club. Ritz, you chose Yard Act, Where's My Utopia, and Tricks chose Destroy Boys Funeral Track, Funeral Soundtrack, number four. Yes. I think we should start kind of how we uh, shouldn't be surprised to start, because I think it's a very little list to say out of any of this. Dominic, do we really need to cover the remixes? Yes. Why? Because they're better than the album. Eh. (sighs) They're kind of the same. I don't give a shit about either. Like, they're different enough in a sense, but the, the actual remixes from each other remix was not different from each other. Like, it was just the same kind of club vibe going on for the whole two hours here. It, it was a lot to listen to. You could say it's better than The King of Limbs because you want to have an opinion, but I gotta agree with <laughs> Chicks, it's not really much to care about. I don't know. I, yeah. As someone who came into Radiohead at this point, when this was like the new thing, I got more into these tracks than I did The King of Limbs itself. Specifically, Remix 8 actually was the one I was really interested in. You're a fucking nerd. Separator, the oh. Anstam Remix 2 is probably my favorite track of all of these. <laughs> and then the, my favorite, second favorite before that is the Jamie XX Rework Part 3 where it's like very like choral and heavenly and all that stuff. And it's like these songs that for the most part are weird and kind of nothing to me I've been like broken down and remixed into something that has something going on. I don't know. I like that. I like seeing what other people have to do with this weird album they have. Well, I, I admire the list of names on these remakes. I mean, obviously, Jamie XX is a, is a, mm-hmm. is a big name to have on here, but it's not the only one on there. Fortet, it's not even, it's not even the first Fortet remix, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they've done a couple Radiohead-related things. They yeah. have. Um, Caribou as well, it's another, another big name on here. Uh, Subtract. You know, there's, some, there's some recognized electronic artists and I mean, this was uh, this is 2011, so a lot of these recognized artists might not have even had their biggest hit by this time. I mean, it, I guess it depends on what is considered their biggest hit for all these artists. But uh, I, I know Subtract would get a bit more 
Uh, I think it might have been actually 2011 that Wildfire came out. Wildfire, I think, is, is technically that biggest hit. But uh, the XX would have uh, Angels come out, which was kind of more where their breakthrough was. Outro was kind of just bubbling yeah. on a hell of road to free stuff. It wasn't really mm-hmm. a hit. Um, and Caribou would break out a lot more with the 2014 album. So you know, these aren't just... These weren't exactly big names, but they were still, you know, names. It's not like they were unknown at the time. Sure. And like, just, did, did, if you do, yeah, if you know yeah, Radiohead yeah. stuff, you know, Mode Selector, again, is someone that Tommy Yorker's worked with a lot, so mm. I'm not saying we're going to cover them anytime soon, but Tommy York did do work with them, so. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And there's probably other names that I just don't really recognize, but I'm, I'm sure if you look in the go, yeah, they, they've done a, a previous remix or stuff like that, and yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's in a sense it's interesting to see just kind of how electronic the King of Limbs actually was, by the way of how this has basically been remixed into an a, a EDM album. Yeah, and like the thing that's cool about it is that mm. this was all released. You know, every couple weeks, roughly, there would be a mm. new single, and so all the singles got thrown together at the end of the year. But I mean, it, 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 we didn't need to listen to two hours of it. It, it was. We, it, we it, it could have been condensed a lot not, more. Uh, now again, it's a compilation, and that's how it actually works. But I'm just taking it out in sense. This is, yeah, this is this is just hell to get through. I'm sorry, it was hell. I did not. Yeah, I did not intend for it to be as such. I did not think it would go down as such. But sometimes I misjudge things. I just think it, it is very interesting comparing what we've covered this year versus last year. Where last year we were pretty on about Radiohead new studio albums. There were little sidetracks here and yeah. there. And this year, there's more sidetracks, but that's also representative of how each of these bands have evolved. Like, studio mm-hmm. albums come less and less, and there's just other stuff they're mm-hmm. doing. Radio had much more so, in a sense, than Muse, but th- there's still a couple wines in this pack that we're going to do. Nothing quite like a remix album again, but the, but the path is very, you know, we have a few more of these, like three or four more of these. We're done. All right. We can go move on to the next. There's, there's no way I can give you a favorite or least favorite. Yeah, hey, that's that's fine. Yeah, Jaded Heart. Dominic's bro. least favorite of the us, week, bro. Uh, I was gonna oh, I was gonna say Dominic can pick because uh, because we ripped on his uh, I guess childhood love here, but he, he beat us uh, beat us to it. So yep, Jaded Heart Club. Hey, I have no love for I have no yeah. no stake in Jaded Heart's club, so you can rip on that all you want. I. I mean, it's actually not much to rip on. It's not great, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it seems like if I was there at the time for a live show like this, I would have had fun. Yeah. Just set up I, I, I can agree with that. Just. Just what? I. <clears throat> end of thought. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, this is. The Jade Harvest Club is a super group of Muse, Jet, Blur, pretty much, and some other people. Apparently, this was first created as a cover band, uh, as uh, Jamie Davis is wanted to. Jamie Davis wanted a birthday, and he's like, "Well, this is gonna be cheaper than like hiring a cover band. I'm just gonna ask my friends to do." That's fair. And so they just started yeah. doing music, and they just started covering a bunch of '60s songs, and they put out a live album first, and then they put out a studio album, and it was a weird thing in 2020 that you know just kind of came and went, and this was a live album. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have yeah. the uh, it doesn't have the rawness that the original songs did, just because it is just a cover band. But they, they still the performances on here are, you know, what you would expect from the super group that this basically is. It's not like these are no names during a cover band. It, it's it's Miles Kane, it's the Last Shadow Puppets. That's uh, that's always kind of been seen as the Alex Turner side project, but it's actually you know. A, a proper band that Miles Kane is a, is a pretty uh, prevalent member of. Uh, Nick Chester, Jet. I mean, that's one of the biggest Australian indie uh, indie rock bands that there was in the uh, in the noughties. I guess indie wasn't so much for the most of their career, but it's kind of started a little good good old Triple J darling. So every, everybody knows mm-hmm. how you're going to be my girl, and everybody's got an opinion on it, good or bad. Uh, Graham Coxon, what what are you, else are you going to say about that? It's, Blur. Um, Matt Bellamy, Muse. Even the Zootons is not an unknown band in the UK. I mean, I don't know uh, how their success really went overseas. I don't think they were too successful 
over here because I really only knew the song from like a rock band, but I feel like the Zootons would be something that Tricks would know about and I wouldn't. The what? The Zootons. I'm gonna be honest, no no idea. I have not heard of them before. Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure they're the ones who did the original Valerie. Yeah, it is like, Valerie. Why don't you give me yeah. love? You know, Valerie's that song that everybody sees as uh, an Amy Winehouse song, which isn't technically true because it's just she's the feature vocals on that. It's actually a Mark Ronson cover, but it's uh, mm. you know it, it is originally the Zootons. It's 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 a song that everybody knows. So this is not not a band full of um they're full of unknown people or no name artists. It's mm. it, it's a bunch of ta- the talented mm. musicians, and they're, they're doing a fun live cover album. I mean, I've seen. A bit of a super group do the uh of Australian musicians do the Beatles White album in full live before and I I can't say it's better than the White album, but I will tell you it was it was still fun. It's a it's a weird thing to imagine like a big like big names like this just going to sh- doing shows in Chicago and South by Southwest or like, where it's like nobody knows who the Jaded Hearts Club is. They could probably get into some nice clubs that way without having to worry about selling out the entire place, even though they probably did. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in a way, I'm sure it's a nice yeah. method of feeling like, oh yeah, this is how it used to be. Apparently Paul McCartney joined them for a gig in 2018 for this uh, live, al- live album. That, that's kind of fun. We still have yet to cover anything McCartney. Hmm. And it's not just the, uh, the album. They also got a, like, they didn't just do an album after this. They also got an EP as well, it seems. They do an EP? Yeah, they, I put a song yeah. in your EP, but I have a feeling that's probably some covers too. I didn't even notice that. Uh, that that that's not listed in the uh, Jaded Hearts. It's on post, Spotify. So. Well, yeah. it's a, yeah, it's on Spotify. Uh, yeah, it's also on YouTube Music. Huh. Maybe but it's it, uh, uh, like someone trying to piggyback and use the element. It's it's not. Yeah, yeah. But right. it, it it looks like a uh, a cover EP. Funnily enough. I mean, I guess yeah, they're all cover EPs, really. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. And, uh, mm-hmm. and you know what? There's, uh, I think a couple of them are on the album anyway, so that's funnily enough. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can hear the cat meowing very loud right I mean, now. I don't even. I, I don't I even wanna, know what mine's doing right now. I want to rip it because we've been we've been in that kind of whole muse phase now where muse is bad. <laughs> but I mean, if this it's is really the side project that they're doing, yeah. It's, they're doing it for fun. I can't tell you that I, I'm, uh, I'm thinking any of these covers are worth listening to over the original, but it, it's an interesting period, I guess, of time. If, if Jaded Hearts Club even still exists, which I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't ever get a, a physical album or streaming or whatever it is. Uh, again, probably doesn't need to. No. Yeah, that's... No. I mean... It, it was... I, I, I admire side projects like this. I think, I, I think it's cool to see that you can't really say this is something that's made so much to sell, more as it actually feels like they're just doing it because they want to. And, you know, they did a, yeah. an album later in 2020 when COVID happened. So, and, mm. you know, that, that's just something that you can just kind of put out mm. and have fun with. Yeah, because I mean, if, if, yeah. if this was something to sell, it would, it would be, I, I, I guess, probably more so under one of their actual names on the on the actual title, I guess. I mean, I know... A lot of the uh, the songs on Spotify and stuff do actually have the the members usually whoever's like listed singing. list yeah listed yeah but the only mm-hmm. one of those that actually would be I I guess recognizable or people would regular uh, not recognizable I guess but more so people would actually search up on Spotify as Miles Kane because he releases music under Miles Kane that's successful well uh, M- M- Matt Bellamy doesn't doesn't actually, really do that he, mm-hmm. he had an album. Not long after Jaded Hearts yeah. Club was a thing. I'm now only learning that he did have one, but it's it, again, it's not nearly as successful as Muse. Oh, no, uh, no. Nick Chester is not no. as as popular as as Jet. But you know, it, it's okay. it's something. You know, it, it's it's yeah. inoffensive. Yeah. It's there. It's them doing what they like to do. They, they were playing sixty songs. They're all vaguely forty something at this point, maybe fifty something. It's 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 dad rock in like a nice way. Yeah, like I, I'm sure if this was something that they had mm-hmm. they had put out that they had gotten the backing of a major label to push over onto the 
airwaves and we heard all the time and blah blah blah. Well, yes, we would have been pissed off by this. We would have thought it was just a a, a shitty cash grab. And you know, music, to a sense, is a cash grab. You're you're looking to it's to make money when you go into this commercial. But mm-hmm. yeah, doing doing it as a as a live show in this kind of way, it's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would pay to see it. Yeah, um, it, it's an experiential thing versus a like serious yeah. musical intent artistry whatever i think the cover band is also just an intrinsic thing in the dna of uh old guys who play guitar because my father was in a black sabbath cover band for a while do they have any albums on spotify they do not damn i mean the act of covering has been something since since music i mean it, it used to be all the classical pieces were just a Dak composer's way of doing it. And you know, a lot of yes. a lot of singers usually just cover other songs and occasionally did a few of their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I mean there's been some some artists over the past couple decades even that have done full album covers. Uh one that was pretty famous when it came out was by somebody who's not not so well regarded anymore, but uh, you do you, Ryan. Ryan. Uh, but controversy aside, that I remember when it, it, he announced he was doing a 1989 cover album. That was a pretty audacious thing to do. And you then see, there was also the, uh, the, the that guy also. that that um, Dominic went to high school with. One or not with with him, same high school. One Doug Walker in the wall. <laughs> yep. Oh God. That's enough. Yeah, I'm starting to think that good people don't do covers albums anymore. <laughs> You remind me of the wall. We'll have to do a, a head-to-head one of these days. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, to be fair, I think a lot of other podcasts and shows have already done that, so that's probably well tread yeah. territory. Yeah. It, it probably is. So we'll compare Doug Walker's The Wall to something else by Pink Floyd. <laughs> the Division I'm, Bell. I'm happy to move on from this, because there's yeah. nothing else we've got really to say. It's yeah. a cover album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could you could go specifically about one of these songs, but they're they're pretty hey, they, they're they, pretty book standard. They, they covered, don't really they change. covered a Beatles song. They covered two. Yeah, they All covered the two. Uh, you guys don't deserve the joke this week. <laughs> no real favorites or least favorites. It's all just kind of a, a stream. Wait, was this the yeah. band that Paul McCartney was in before Wings? Uh, no, that was the <laughs> Paul and Linda tapes. Ah, uh, yeah. No real favorites or least favorites for either the Radiohead and me and stuff. This is this is one of those ones that I guess we've kind of covered both of these because we need to in the eyes of uh, Dominic. Realistically, this probably could have been skipped, but it hasn't been. It's interesting to know this exists. It would have been fun at the time, but in the end, it it is still just a pretty bog standard cover album. It's better than Kids Pop. It's better yeah. than Kids Pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's our high praise. It's better than Kids Bop. The Jaded Hearts Club went better than Kids Bop. That sounds like a fucking skit. It does. I still, I'm still waiting for uh, the Kids, uh, Kids Bop covers Chart Mask replica. Oh, fuck. I would unironically buy that. I would too. I, would. I, I gotta know. Would it be illegal for us to just pay a bunch of. Uh, Elementary schoolers to stop your thoughts trout mask right replica. now. It's not gonna get better. We don't say this out loud, tricks. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. You should have the second that you used the word pay and elementary <laughs> kids in the same sentence, that's where it stops. Yeah, that's fair. Good luck wrangling all those parents, let alone the children. I know some weirdos with kids. I mean, and I know a bunch of weirdos who love to have kids record songs. Not that I know them, but I know of them. Like that guy that fucking did Friday with Re- Rebecca Black. Yeah. Hey, don't forget his true classic, Allison Colt's Chinese food. Yeah, that's also yeah. one of the ages. Yeah, they. Uh, I feel like Friday gets remembered a bit more because it wasn't as racist as Chinese food was. So we're not so happy to forget it. As we were with Chinese food. But we still do remember it. No, has she no one has forgotten yet. 
as Alison Gold got on a, uh, a redemption arc. I think, I think anybody who I you know I I, I say this to, uh, I to, to nobody like to not in any kind of uh, mean spirit towards her because she was definitely. Uh, a lot more unaware to this whole thing. It's Patrice Wilson, by the way, is the guy who uh, was ahead of all these things. Yes, yes. If I were, if if I made Chinese food, that song, I wouldn't ever want to be out in the public again. It, it, it's a pretty embarrassing thing to have exist, and I, I, I feel for for Alison Gold. It, it's a lot of that would be on Patrice Wilson, but in fact, probably ninety five percent of it, and the other five percent would be on Alison's parents. You know, hopefully she's living life somewhere happily, maybe managing a Zoomies or something. And then one day her employee comes in and is like, oh, I found this thing. And she's like, no, you're fired. We're not doing yep. that. I mean, it, uh... it was officially taken down off the uh, the official YouTube that they had. But it's, it's a... Uh... People saved it, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It still exists. Uh, yeah. She apparently yeah. had a second single. Um... Gail, eat your heart out. Allison Gold, A B C D E F G. Oh shit! You have the G. Oh fuck! Another letter is at the tower. Anyway, what are we picking? What are what are we doing next? Tricks, you choose. Uh, let's talk about um, fucking Utopia is coming to mind. I'm horrible with these fucking album names. Yes. Where's my Where's yeah, my utopia? Yes. Alright, so I said I would do this last week, a while back, and then we didn't because the Euro Arms of album came. So instead, I delayed this by a week, but now I picked it. Uh, they put out their debut album in 2022. I uh, kind of discovered them during that. Rich made my top 100 at around 94 or something like that th- that year. Uh, it was a very kind of minimalistic po- uh, post-punk album. And now... They have the sophomore one, and I thought it was a lot more interesting in a full album, so I decided it is worth covering. That's the intro. This is another one in the in the vein of Black Midi, Black Country New Road, and what was the one that got picked recently? Um, Viagra Boys. Viagra Boys, yeah. That post punky British, usually just kind of. I know Viagra Boys wasn't British, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. In mm-hmm. the sound, yeah. This one, uh, yeah, it feels a little more, I don't know, working class, I would say, in a way. It feels a little more grounded. I don't know how to describe it, really. Like, there's more about life and stuff. It it definitely has a lot more than talking about in a kind of financial cost of living type of, uh, a, a type of, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for, demographic here. Like, the that kind of class of, of people, which is, you know, us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We make hits to Broke Millennial Men, I think the line goes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess my, my, my take on this album is, is that I love it, and I'm right. saying that before either of your t- two takes. I think they do a lot... It, it comes from also having heard the, um, the first album and being there for that release as well, having seen Yard Act last year as well as a part of Laneway. Uh, seeing them again later this year as well, and kind of going on with the evolution that they've been doing here. I think they're doing a lot more interesting just things, I guess, sonically and thematically on this album as well. I love the the use of sampling they have in between songs, which kind of wrap up the song in its own a little way, but it's not done in this kind of overabundant way that fills up the album. I love the sudden beat switches that happen in some of these songs, like Down by the Stream, where it has the acid trip at the end of it. Very avalanche Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blackpool Illuminations also has that uh, at the moment as well. Like, it, it, it's, an, it's not an album with no choruses, but there's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of songs in there that don't have choruses, and then another one, a bunch that do, and they're very catchy. It goes from this very unstructured songwriting to very structured, but I feel like they flow pretty well between the album. Some of it feels funky disco-y, some of it feels like they're just trying to get something yeah. out their chest. Yeah. It, well, that, that's literally going from We Make Kids to Down by the Stream. Yeah, where they where mm-hmm. they, they ramble about bullying a kid for a while. Yeah, and the, yeah. the kind of uh, 
self like lack of self awareness at the end there, like intentionally of the whole. If, if my kid was ever abusing someone, I'd pin him against the wall. Yeah, line that just kind of mm-hmm. really sticks into there. The the kind of r- random screaming outro that happens in Grifter's Grief, which is so different to the rest of it. Like I, I feel like this album has a lot of moments in which it does try something different and it does it pretty well. I, I don't think it it always uh, does do that. I think in the middle it kind of uh, slows down a bit, but it, it it's still quite a interesting album from start to finish. It's interesting. Yeah, it's not it's not uh, ants from up there necessarily. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not, no. not trying to compare it to Ants from Up There, though. I, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's not like this polished masterpiece of like, holy shit, each song like hits and like has a point and like, yeah. goes at it, right? But it's it's <laughs> another part of the genre where you know, there's some of the songs hit, some of the songs are not as hitting, but like they're 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 exploring some of the same like topical ideas, like I like the ways songs are created. Like um, a fair amount of this is at times spoken or like yeah. vaguely rhyming in a way that kind of creates a beat. Yeah, like Blackpool yeah. Elimination is just a good example of that. That's basically seven and a half minutes of like a fake interview happening. Yeah. Yes, and the story is fairly engaging, and then it, and then he starts going on after a while, and then you you kind of lose it, and he's like, and then they're like, you 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 making this up? Yeah, kind of. Like, yeah, yeah, kind of. What are you doing that for? Want to bother people with the truth? Yeah, and I, I, what I do actually like about Blackpool Illuminations as well is the way that it's kind of suddenly the instrumentation slowly starts to change in the background as well before that kind of acid trip, uh, kind of recall, I guess we would call it, or throwback happens at the end of the track as well. It it, it mm-hmm. kind of does. Make, it's not just seven and a half minutes of repetitiveness happening into there, but the main the the main intrigue of that song is obviously the story uh, telling that's happening in there, which it's kind of it, it, it's spoken in a way that's just engaging enough to listen to it for the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's tempting to like look at bands that do work like this and be you know, really praising of it and really interested in it because it still feels like it's a new, different, fresher thing that that's going on. Even yeah, it's becoming well, like a very mm-hmm. established trend. Well, you're talking about uh. Compare like the same scene as Viagra Boys, Black Me, which rest in peace, they're, they're broken up now. If you haven't heard the news, okay. uh, Black Country, Black Country, New Road. Um, mm-hmm. but this this isn't the same band. You can you can obviously tell if you, I mean, same with the other three as well. That if you picked one of their songs from each one of these, you would be able to tell which band it is. They all stand out in a, in a in a sound that is, yeah, still got some similarities between them. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, with Black Country and Black Midi, their quality is incredible. So it's it's a bit it's a bit different there, and you're a bit more used to the songs because they're a lot more worth listening to multiple times. But I think there are still moments on this album, to me, which completely just like grab my attention or grab, get me hooked with some of the catching. I mean, we we make hits is a really good kind of disco tune that they've done on here because it's other important feature that is done with this chorus is that it, it is pretty fucking catchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I was getting caught up with the Black Mini splitting up thing. Damn. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jordy, Jordy seems to have basically uh, confirmed that. Yeah, apparently it was not something that was planned to be told, and he just kind of said it. Yeah. Bummer. Well, um, well now, now they're on indefinite hiatus, quote-unquote. So. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh well, indeed. I think that's that's the thing. Sometimes is that bands just come and go, and we've been very lucky. And then a lot of what we cover, a lot of the bands stick around for a while. Well, yeah, but it's all too, you know, it's all too prescient when all of a sudden you, you cover a bunch of stuff, and all of a sudden, no, that that's it. Yeah. Damn. All right. Oh well. Okay. There. Yeah. Can I, can I do? Will your merch store still be open? So I, I'm not spending thirty bucks on a t-shirt in a year, or fifty, 50 bucks. Six, six, so now throw this back to the album once a year, and I ask, what was your favorite or least favorite part of this album? I don't. Uh, hold up, let me look at the track list. I did take some minor notes. I don't usually take a lot of notes. Hold up. <laughs> I mean, this one feels like if, if Dominic had notes it'd be a lot to write just for the actual lyrics on here just because it is quite a word yeah 
I didn't I didn't really like um stick to uh I like listened too deeply to the lyrics, but like I really enjoyed how it was just like poetry spoken at me and like just this spoken word in some ways that I mm. I enjoy that kind of shit. And um <clears throat> But yeah, Blackpool Illuminations where with the story is probably my best, my favorite. It's like the one I can recall the most of. I also like the uh, the opener to this album in a way it has like kind of smoother chorus happening on here as well. And the the way that's one of those other moments where there's like kind of sample uh working in the song and how it opens up the um the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like an illusion opening the album and kind of giving you an example like a like a whole Kind of thesis statement of what's going to happen from here on. It's cool. I like. Well, that. the 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 first yeah. the first lyrics to this album is it's a bank holiday and all the hospitals are shut. I guess I better soar off my own foot. Yeah, very pretty hardcore, ear catching, eye catching lyric. Mm. Yeah, and that's that's basically like the um you know for an album that's called Where's My Utopia, you you would expect there would be some kind of dystopian start or something like that, and I think that's a a pretty good opener to an album that's called Where's My Utopia that that basically sets up what to expect from this. I don't even think it's about about necessarily dystopia. It's more of the like, well, we're just living in a dystopia. We're just living. Yeah, in that's what that's that's yeah. that's what I yeah, yeah. I'm kind of referring. In, to. But it, the other the other thing that kind of also sets it up from the whole lyric is the sarcasm that's yeah. set in the line, and that is prevalent in mm. uh, in his vocal silence throughout this album. I just wanted to say that I I think it's easy to associate dystopia with like the run of dystopian fiction we had a, a number of years yeah. ago where it's all yeah bleak and everyone's divided into clear sections and groups and yada 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 all the things that are clear markers for this is dystopia well the the actual answer is a lot just more simple and depressing it's just like well we're just kind of mm. there and we're just living life yeah there. and this is kind of just stuff that happens and stuff you remember and stuff that you dream about I mean, the, the album art can kind of actually show that as well. The the album art is a uh, rise. It, it seems to be both rising sea levels and global warming, burning this person alive whilst you're still taking a business call. Yeah, well, that's a corded phone too. Yep. I uh, yeah, I I, I like this album. I, f- I feel like if we did cover their debut as well, it would be a a, lo- a lot more context to see just how they've evolved into this like. Uh, into the sound and why is it so I guess interesting in comparison mm. um mm-hmm. but you know it, I don't think it's that worth worth covering I, I like songs off that album but I think as an album full it is uh, a bit repetitive yeah good album I, I, yeah. I haven't really covered much that hasn't been emo this year in 2024 so this is one of my the highlights this year that is not emo hell yeah Fair enough. Uh, favorites off this, An Illusion, We Make Hits, Down by the Stream is a very just kind of haunting track by the end of it. I also f- really like the uh, the catchiness of When the Laughter Stops. I think uh, KJ Pearson brings something new with her vocals into there. It's not just a, a feature artist that sounds the same right. as the person mm-hmm. on there. Uh, Blackpool Illuminations as well is a very interesting track. Yeah. Uh, least favorite is uh, Fizzy, Fizzy Fish. I feel like that's a song on this that just does like nothing for this album. I really like We Make Hits. I like Down by the Stream. Like, I, I think, you know, kind of when you get to the, the harder parts of Down by the Stream, it's like, oh, okay, we're, we're kind of just switching up into something else and it's trying to say something with all this, and I think that's great. Uh, I also like Blackpool Illuminations, where I lose it. I think Petroleum is where I kind of lose the thread a little bit, and then I think Vineyard to the North, Vineyard to the North. It's there, but it, it doesn't really need to be there. Blackpool Illuminations could be an ending. Yeah, I, I agree. I think a vineyard for the North I still appreciate more than Fizzy Fish, but like I, I, I agree. It's not really like, it, mm-hmm. it's it's fine for a five minute track, but you're right. You, you could just end the album with Blackpool. Yeah. Uh Blackpool Illuminations is uh my favorite. Least favorite is also probably Vineyard in the North. Alright. That leaves us with one more. A little bit of a shorter episode. Destroy Boys. We do that sometimes. Yeah, Destroy Boys. 
so this is uh, this is just an artist i've been listening to in the kitchen and like i've been enjoying them and i saw they put out a new album and i'm like oh fuck let's just put it put that one on so and yeah i said it was actually pretty relevant for you to pick it because uh good things lineup just got announced and they were pretty prevalent in the advertising that good things had for the 2024 now hell uh, so yeah they're randomly coming to australia hell yeah fuck yeah I, I was very intrigued by the fact that when I was looking them up, the first thing that really came up was they were part of the the swimmers controversy hmm. with uh, Joey Armstrong and whatnot. Yes, it all leads back to Green Day. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't think I ever actually saw the relation to that one, if you want to fill me um, in a little bit. I, I don't fully like, I know I, it, but like... I know the swimmers controversy, but I don't know, like, Every single part about it. They it was more of just that they they were kind of young and associated with some of the people in that scene, and could they have done something and said something? Yes or no. There may have been like kind of statements coming out that were kind of like you know not maybe the best, but not like damning in their own right. I guess you would mm-hmm. say it's kind of like a, a, see, I, I, a I, band trying. I, to I, I always hate. Go ahead. I always hate the take of the when other people. Like no, I mean, I I guess when you are associated and you you know, I uh, you're around people quite a lot, you know, people do expect that kind of stuff. But it's the whole like, if you know, you should always uh speak out publicly kind of shit because they always kind of disregard the actual victims' wishes. Yeah, you know, sometimes the victims yeah. don't want things going public, but everyone's like, oh, this person knew it and they didn't say it so long ago, so that makes them an asshole. So, you actually don't know the fucking behind the scenes at all. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jicks, I are, are you still the only one who's kind of really picked Riot Girl music? Did the repeat? Are you the only one who's really picked Riot Girl music for this? Podcast? Pretty much, yeah. Because I think you picked Thick, which you know, it's not like Riot Girl is here to completely uh, you know, it's one genre. It is more just an overbranching. Yeah, uh, thing, but you know, you've done guy. petrol girls and stuff. Yeah, petrol girls, I guess, in a sense, but they, they, I don't feel like they fit the same uh, vibe mm. exactly. But I would, I, you know, we'll put, for, I guess, for the sake, we will say it then. At that point, um, you know, I picked the Stellars. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we, we all have one. Well, still, I guess, kind of in that point, with all the riot going on, I'm using quotation marks because, you know, I know. In some sense, this does just come to over uh, underclassify artists, but still, it is an overlanching branch. Out of all the mm-hmm. Riot Girl that we've covered, when it comes to the Fix, when it comes to the Petrol Girls, when it comes to the Decillas, when it comes to the Taco Cats and all that, the thing that I feel like this stands out for is just the fact that there's a lot more bilingual moments on it, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a but, good... Go ahead. Uh, even compare it to all the other Riot Girl music out there as well. Go back to the Bikini Kills. Go back to the um, to the Slater Kinnies uh, and you know, some of the more experimental ones that have come out there as well. And they, which you know aren't exactly in there, but they have very similar soundscapes that we're going into there, like sleigh bells and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, uh, this doesn't really feel like it stands out that much compared to the. Uh, all these other artists that we've heard, but it surprises me. You know, so this is not a, a sense that I don't like this. It's just I didn't think this stood out too much for what is a pretty big scene, and yet they're they're doing quite well. Yeah, I, I think like it's... one one point four million listeners nearly. I I think it's a great example of a band that sticks within the genre, like ideas and conventions, and produces songs that sound like other bands you may have heard, but. They have a bit of the secret sauce that makes some of these songs just kind of shine. Yeah, like I, I agree breaking with that. Down, you don't know. You hear yes. So like a lot of these songs, like are they like sonically way different, way evolved, or anything like that? No, like they're very much in the genre they're in. But there's yeah. just something about them to me that's like actually this is really good. Like this is this is interesting. This sounds really nice. I'm I'm digging it. I, I I dig it too, but it's, I I also just feel like every time I, I I listen to some of these songs, I just feel like there are there are moments where we've listened to songs that have gone with the same themes that were done so much better. There was there was one song in here which talked about uh, walking in the park, and I was just uh, immediately reminded of the Amel and the Fi- uh, Sniffers album. Mm-hmm. I was which, a lot of- you know, it was it was a good song on the uh, final soundtrack, but Knifey just clears. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Like compared to Amal and the Sniffer is like this is like I'm not I don't want to like qualitatively all this is B tier, right? But like Yeah. If Amal and the Sniffer yeah. is like the main act, this is like the supporting act. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I was wondering also, was it Daisy and the Scouts that we listened to? Yes. Daisy and the Scouts. I was getting some nice vibes off that because like that was another album that was like, you know, this this is not like revolutionary, but these songs I like. What they're doing here is cool. Yeah. And I will say this isn't <clears throat> their best work, if you ask me. Oh, no. Um I no, it's not. I I was actually pretty kind of disappointed by this. It was just it it, it it's good, but it's not it's not as good as um I forget the, their eyeball album. I'm horrible at remembering album names. <laughs> um, open mouth, open heart, make room. Sorry, mom. Mom jeans. Grimester, destroy boys and audio tree live. Fucking um, make room. Okay. I I think that's their peak. Well, we might have to discover them more because like I was really impressed with this. So if they if they if there's better stuff. Yeah, we'll have to. I at least in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, we will have to listen to more. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm 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 happy to hear what their um what their earlier stuff sounds like. I think this is just a case of, you know, there were, there were good moments on here. I think, you know, the most interesting part of this album is where it, it suddenly turns um, into a different language. Uh, yeah. And because I, I just didn't kind of expect it going into it, but it's all the bilingual nature of it. It, it just happens so flawlessly. Yeah. Like, not f- yeah. like smoothly transitions like that. Um, yeah, you know, there there were some pretty catchy moments on here on some of the short songs. Like, should have been me as a one minute, a fast paced track that I thought was actually I uh, surprise like it was surprisingly really catchy uh, on there. I guess it's just one of those moments where the uh, where the hits on it hit a lot more. Yeah, I I think Alexia Rosidas is a really wonderful singer. I think you know some of these songs really show off how well the vocals are done. Uh, tricks you should know, they do cite Brooks Nielsen as an influence. Hell, yeah. I mean, he's a good vocalist. Maybe maybe, maybe not the best. I, I'm not sure what the whole drama is yet, still. I, I, I refuse to look it up, so... Um, is there yeah. New, is there new Brooks Nielsen drama? No, just the whole old Growlers drama. I still can't make heads or tails of, I'll be honest. Gotcha. And I'll, I, I just choose to live in ignorance in this case. Uh, I I don't really have too much more to say about this one. I would have, I guess, loved to have had more to say about it because I did still quite like it. I uh, it's just that I feel like it, it, it's it's a sound that we've already covered, and there's yeah. just not much more to explain out of it. If if you like, you know, I, I I say Riot Girl Punk because it is still a description that you can do of this album, but it's it, it's not trying to say that in a way that classifies this only as Riot Girl. They they definitely do still try to have a lot more of just the punky sound going into this and, and a more yeah. heavy side. There is a pretty I think the last track on here, you uh Boy Feel was actually pretty uh it almost had like some kind of electronic influence, I felt like that. I think that was the one that had um the like the most cleanest production on the whole album, which I can't potentially uh, I can't really say I liked, uh having listened to it, but it it was Still, I guess, an interesting change of pace that happened randomly at the end. That being said, just because something gets lost in the sound of everything else doesn't mean it's still not good. It, it, this, is a, this is a good album. If you, if, you like, if you like pop punk, which is the other explanation we can do to generalize things, you, you yeah. do like this album. Yeah, it's a, it's a fair assessment. I think one of my favorites are Shadow and Breaking Down, Shedding Skin, You Don't Know, You Hear Yes. I think Boy Feel... Is really interesting as an ending too, just kind of in a more queer direction, which is always nice. Mm-hmm. It, it, like they have features, they have mannequin pussy, they have scowl. You know, there's there's other people. Which mannequin there. pussy is also uh, appearing in Australia at the same time, but not for good things for Meredith. I just think that's that's just interesting. Interesting. I mean, mannequin pussy does have an album this year, which I'm supposed to listen to at some point, but I haven't. Yeah. Uh, favorites for me, uh, Boy Feel, uh, Should Have Been Me, no real East favorites, it's just solid, it's okay. Uh, favorites, Should Have Been Me, I think is probably my favorite on here. Least favorites, probably Boy Feel, just because I, I just wasn't really vibing with it as much as everything else on here. 
Oh, uh, a more uh, divine or however that's supposed to be um, pronounced. I'll probably pronounce it completely wrong. That's another one of my favorites as well. The least favorites for me. All right. All right. We are now at the ranking stage. Oh, that's easy. I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah. At least okay. least favorite King of Wings remixes. I'm not gonna tell you which one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight is better. Just, <laughs> just down at the bottom. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, then Jaded Hearts Club, because uh, Destroy Boys is better than Jaded Hearts Club, just because it's a lot more original. Uh, and then Yard Act for me. I'm going to 100% agree with you, Ritz. Okay, I guess I'll be the outlier. I the bottom, I'm going to put Jaded Hearts Club. It's cool, but it doesn't really do anything for me. Like, it's fine. It's fun. It's not offensive. I will put TKOL onto the Five Six Seven after that and put... Above that, uh, remix number eight, because those are my favorite of the bunch. Um, I know that's a single, doesn't really count, but for what yeah, it's yeah. worth. After that, I'm going to do Yard Act as number two, because I like that album, but I do I do vibe with Destroy Boys more. I definitely like that album all the way through, no skips, a lot more. How could you do this? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Denying you victory. So close. Uh, but the fight continues. In fact, it continues yes. uh, for a bit longer this one because uh, I'm uh, I'm not here next week for recording. I, I I'm going to be up in Brisbane for a week for Big Sound. It's a uh, music convention happening up in in Brisbane. It's kind of like South by Southwest, although there's a South by Southwest happening in Sydney. Uh, it's a little bit better than that because the kind of pay artists a little bit more, not, not much, but Good. you know something. And it's a lot cheaper for consumers to actually go and see the acts, and there's a bunch of free stuff that happens. It's a, it should be a pretty good week. And most importantly, I will be hitting Gig 100 up there. I will Hell, be yeah. finishing the challenge that I set for myself of 100 gigs. A bit, bit of journey this year. It's, it's, it's been a while. I can't remember where I'm up to. I'm not going to bore everybody up with the, uh, with the full details, but at the current moment, I'm on 97. Uh, Dune Rats and Fiddler doing a co headline show is currently 98, but it could end up as 99. We'll see. And Garage Sale is currently 99 and could be 100. So I'm thinking in the end, I'll probably sneak another one in and Garage Sale will probably end up as Gig 100. Good for all right. Sale. Good for them. And we'll all know by the time this episode's released because I would have posted the 100 gigs by then. Oh, well, right. yes. Now, first, first order of business, I give you both a task. Ah, uh, yes. Name was... the album based on one single photo and very minimal help beyond that. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna ask uh, just one question before it, which is not directly about the artist or anything. And you can tell me if the question uh, is not allowed and not give me an answer. Yeah. Is it a recent album? I'm not gonna give an answer. I'm not gonna give an answer. Fuck you. Uh, I hope you tell us what it is. After I've been this. told. You have been told. That is... Yes. Okay, so... Trix's, P- Trix's pick for posterity was, would you say, the Gummy Bears album or something like that? Yeah, I made a Hail Mary play because I saw the Albanese and like I figured the Gummy Bear brand. And I went fucking, is he doing like 5D chest and torturing us with the fucking Gummy Bear song album where they do it in like different languages or whatever the fuck? No. Because I, I, I still, I, I still kind of... St- what, what has been sent in the photo here? Is a bottle of Mountain Dew. Is that Diet Dew or just regular Mountain Dew? It is Diet Dew. Diet Dew. Uh, and Sherbet Gummy Ice Pop, it says, I think. It does. Which they're I... like gummies. They're, they're like gummy bears, but they're like dreamsicle, well, like obstacle kind of like shaped. Yeah. I, you know what? I'll ask the question to Trix. Trix, does the diet part actually matter? Yes. Ah, incredible. So, a diet Mountain Dew gummy. I, uh... Um, you're, you're thinking too much into it. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of am. It's, uh... I'm, I'm guessing... You know, I, 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 I... I'm just gonna steal the, tri- uh, the, the guess that Trix did. Uh, that wasn't allowed. Just so, if it is it, that's incredible. Uh, if it wasn't, everybody else can know what Trix this was. Because I am otherwise stumped. Uh, but that was uh, Lana Del Rey's Born to Die. That's it. <laughs> yep. That's, that was it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I thought it'd be too obvious yeah, I, just I, to I, post a picture of Diane Mountain Dew, so I wanted to make it a little harder. Yeah, so the die was there. That's how I, I assumed the die was. But I, um, I, I'm not too sure where the rest of it comes. Could you please uh, explain? More that I wanted to There's cover. There's a track off it. I wanted. To, I kind of wanted to cover up the Die Mountain Dew because it's literally a song on the album. But I mean, I've never listened to Born to Die with the uh, with the song titles. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. That is a song off it. Uh, there you go. Shows how much of a Lana Del Rey fan I am. Also, just coincidentally, happens to be relevant because of JD Vance, but that's that was yeah. never going to be a factor. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. That I was did my initial up. thought until I googled Mountain yeah, Dew I album. Yeah, I searched that. I searched um Diet Mountain Dew as well. But it was like Tim Walls, JD Vance. I'm like I don't fucking care. All right, so one of the albums we're going to be listening to from me is going to be Lana Del Rey's "Born to Die." I'm I'm, I'm on a pop kick. I want to do yep. some more pop, and that's a classic one. But I want to do a more recent one. So, uh, Ritz, I'm going to ask you directly: Which white gay South African pop star should we cover this week? Um, because there there are two options. Yeah, it, it, do you mean South African and ancestry? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are, are we doing Rush? That's one option. Yeah, do that one because that's actually like Troy Sivan song that I like. So do that one. The other option's Orville Peck. No, no, I, I, I just told you the option. Okay. I, I, I would prefer the Orville Peck, but <clears throat> well, it's a choice. You, you, you didn't get the choice, so fuck. I, mean, I, yeah. I was going to ask, was 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 gonna ask tricks, but hmm, now, we're at a, now we're at an impasse. Do we do something uh, to give each other or stampede? How about we flip a coin? Let's get a digital coin flipper. I will do it. I will. I will take a picture. All right. Honestly, though, I'm just kind of surprised that you've like hadn't picked the choice of an album. In all, in all honesty, this week was going to be Blue Neighborhood, and I was like, eh, I don't want to do that. All right. But I, I haven't listened to something to give each other in full. I just know that the singles uh, off it were so much better than Troy Sivan's other work. Well, we're Troy Sivan then. Hold on now, I'm getting the coin thing up. Might as well wait. Alright. Okay, before you could flip a coin, Trix flipped. You know what, whilst, uh, whilst this is happening, Trix, what are you picking? <laughs> well, I was going to pick, uh, I had a reason that involved uh, you, because um, it's getting along to, up to uh, election season these, <clears throat> these days. And I yep. figure it's, you don't know enough about um, the American political system or just how Amer- American schooling in general. And so I also kind of want to do something different this week. And I'm going to give you guys something with no set listening or watching. Okay. But I just, I want you to just explore the space in your own. We're going to be doing Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want you to watch a bunch, spend like an hour or two on YouTube and watch a bunch of Schoolhouse Rock and just note down the ones you watched uh you're definitely gonna have to uh, link me some uh some starting points i i will ritz um what, what, after this call i'll make you i'll type you up a quick little list yeah cool so uh i'm currently deciding i guess uh what we do in here and i i you know what i don't think we've mentioned them this episode i think i think i think that's the perfect time to uh to pick it, don't you think? Don't you think, Dominic? What could you possibly be talking about? So, I said when we did this, we would be uh, doing it in two ways. Because it would be the most interesting way for us to, to cover this. And, funnily enough, it's the only way that we cover this band. So, we're going to be covering Crywank's James is Going to Die Soon. Oh. Because <laughs> we're also going to be covering the cover album, Jude is Going to Die Soon, when <laughs> we will look back at you and love you forever. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing, right? Yeah. Going beyond coin flip, my, going into this, it was going to be Troy Sivan, but I got really into Midnight Rush as a single by Orville Peck. <laughs> Just pick, Dominic. Just pick. We won't fight you. We won't. I might. Just pick. Let's just do something to give each other. 
All right. All righty then. Price of on something to give each other. One already born to die. So that is Schoolhouse Rock as a concept. As a yes. concept, the second in our Crywank comparisons episodes because I refused to ever do a Crywank album by itself. Covering that and the cover album from from We Will Look Back at You and Born to Die and Something to Give Each Other. Pretty oh, varied episode. Poetically, those two titles, I guess, go together in a weird way. Mm. Yeah. But James is yeah. going to die. Jude is going to die. Born, Born to, to die. die. Something to give each other. Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. In tricks, maybe we'll do a Green Day episode or something in the middle, since we have two weeks. Maybe. We'll figure it out. In the meantime, yeah. this has been Disney Ways. My name is Dominic. Catch me online at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I on uh, Twitter, Dominic Chagoki on YouTube. I'm also on the Games My Mom Found podcast every now and then. We just did an episode about Xenogears. Check that out if you'd like. Uh, I've been Ritalin. You can catch me at one of the many gigs that happen in everywhere because that's apparently where i am these days i was uh, i was successfully to, hold on hold on tricks i was successfully mentioned it, by his it. brother as dj wise apprentice so i guess that's who i am now huh hell yes um i have been tricks you can catch me uh inside of your walls i also have a uh, uh instagram now, walls. at tricks the, uh, at tricks uh, uh, the sandwich uh, wizard on instagram uh and i just post food pics there now New link to add to the stable of link. Yes, my ever growing stable. All right. That'll do it for us this episode. Have a good one, y'all. Have a good one.